I'm fine. We'll be there soon. That's what you said in Portland. Is that the new house? Yeah. I like our old one. Uh, hi, hi! There's Sandra. <laughs> oh, welcome! <sighs> Sorry, did we keep you waiting? Oh, not at all, not at all. We just were doing a little tidying up. This must be Audrey. <laughs> Are you excited to move into your new house? Okay! <laughs> Let's go, ladies. Ah! Out of the chariot, into the castle. Come on, come to, let's go. Come on, honey. Welcome home. <laughs> uh, here. I see uh, the truck got here. Oh, I just had them go by your labeling instructions. Very thorough, Liz. <laughs> I get it from my mom. What? The organizing, Jane. Oh, I could use that in my office if you... Ever run out of benefits? I... Oh, my God. I can't believe that I just said it's that. Okay. I am so it's sorry. Sandra, it's all right. Hey, Audrey! Did you know that I went to college with your mom? What? Honey. You know, I, I am so sorry about Jason. And if there's anything that I can do... Yeah, thank you. Be... Of course. Now let me show you this kitchen, and I can't wait till you see the master bath upstairs. It's remodeled, it's amazing. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Do I have to go to school tomorrow? Yes. Can't I stay home a day just to unpack and settle in? You really shouldn't miss any more school, honey. It's a brand new house in a brand new town. Just one day. No just ones. We were lucky to get you in at St. Francis. I hate it here. How can you say that? We just got here literally like four hours ago. Why can't we just live with Grandma and Grandpa? They always knew what to do. Are you saying I don't?
My child, I carried you in my belly for nine whole months. Uterus. Yes, my, my uterus. Babies don't gestate in the stomach. Sure. But the belly, you see, that's a, that's a general term for the whole area where I carried you. So that means that I know you better than anybody else, which means that I know what you need right this very minute. Fortune cookie. Come on. Wow, for me? Oh, thank you, mother. Just take it. What is it? I will meet a tall stranger. What? I know, not even in town a day and the fortune is already trying to set me up on a date. That's a lame fortune. What about yours? Hidden secrets will be revealed to you. Hmm. Like how to cooperate with your mother? Or who let that fart? <laughs> what? May I be excused? Oh! Oh, you little... How do you make it smell that bad? Chinese food. No, that does not work that fast. God. I'm gonna go and pack my room. But it smells like rotten eggs. You better not forget to shower tonight, young lady. You smell like a thousand miles of hard road. Rotten farts. So nice to finally meet you, Mrs. Charles. You too, Mrs. Phillips. And lovely to have you, Audrey. Thanks. And that is Mr. Stonewall's classroom. He's expecting you. Go ahead, honey. I'll be back at 3.15 to pick you up. You must be Audrey. Yeah. Thanks so much for fitting her in. Please join us. I know it was a last minute thing, and I really hated having to pull her out of her old school, but... I understand. We really needed a change. I don't mean to pry, but... Would you like me to set up an appointment for Audrey with the school counselor? Oh, uh, we're still talking through some stuff at home, so I was gonna go over and meet the pastor, introduce myself. Ooh, terrific. You'll love Father Felix, he's wonderful. Great. Just wanna get the lay of the land first. And don't worry about Audrey, Mrs. Charles. We'll take good care of her. Thanks.
it's unlocked. Hi, Howie. Happy housewarming. Hey. I'm just making dinner. I brought wine. Ooh, thanks. Liz, this place looks amazing. You have unpacked so much. Organizing Jean, remember? Right. Wow, Audrey, <laughs> you are quite the little artist. It's about my dad. Do you have time for a glass? Uh, or... You know what, no, I, I, mm. <laughs> I have a date. Oh. He is a doctor, so fingers crossed. And I'm not gonna look like this forever, so. <laughs> um, and you guys should have some mother-daughter time. Uh, okay. And then after, open the wine, drink the whole bottle. I'm gonna go find a husband. Uh, uh, uh. And then I will call you and tell you every dirty detail. Okay. Okay, bye. Have fun. Bye. My drawing scared her. Let me see. I'm not finished. Honey. Mr. Stonewall says we should draw what we feel inside. And that can help when we feel sad. Who's this next to you? Caleb Douglas. Is that a boy from school? Yeah, he's new too. Nobody talks to him either. Well, I think that is sweet of you to be his friend. I think it's wonderful of you to take him under your wing. Especially when you're a new kid too. Honey? How long till dinner? Um, about five minutes. You wanna get washed up? Okay. So, <clears throat> there's a guy working at a grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. He's in the produce aisle. He's putting stuff away, and he feels this tap on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's this lady. She says, hi, uh, where's the broccoli? And he's like, actually, we're all out of broccoli, but we do have a new shipping coming in tomorrow. She's like, okay, great. Ten minutes later, excuse me. Turns around, it's the same lady. She says, hi, where's the broccoli? just kind of stares at her for a little bit. And then she, she says, actually, we don't have any more broccoli, but we will have a new shipment coming in tomorrow. Okay. 10 minutes after that, he's still working. Is there and a then, punch line? Yeah, there is, it's okay. coming. And then, and then she says, it's the same lady again. And she says, where's the broccoli? broccoli. And he's like, uh, can you do me a favor? Can you spell cat like in catastrophe? She says, C-A-T. Can you spell dog like in dog <laughs> She says, D-O-G, okay, can you spell fuck like in broccoli? And 
and she said, there's no fucking broccoli. Like, that's what I've been trying to tell you, lady. <laughs> Hey, honey. Throw it back. Is that Caleb you're playing with? He's not coming up. Well, he's probably looking for that ball. You want me to go get him? Okay. Caleb?
little boy who ran down here? Do you know where he went? Okay, if you could just keep, keep an eye out. Let's go. Mrs. Charles. Oh, Mr. Stonewall. The kid's ball, it just, it, it went down in the basement. I couldn't find Caleb, but uh, I told the, the janitor. Uh, I was hoping we could set up some time to meet. Yeah, uh, of course, we'll, we'll come see you soon. I have some time after class on Friday. Yeah, that should work. Stonewall is Audrey's art teacher, right? Yeah. May you know him? I mean, I sold him his house. And my son was in his class, and he's very smart and very single. And very young. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Sandra, I am shocked at you. I never thought I could shock a Catholic girl. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Michael hated that art therapy <laughs> bullshit anyway, but he never did anything crazy like Audrey, so. Yeah, well, she's, she's saying it's helping, so. She's been through a lot. How are you doing? Fine. Really? What do you want me to say? Anything? Nothing? It's just... hard. I wish I would have met him. Me too. <laughs> me too. Have you met Father Felix yet? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's on the agenda. Good. Ah, there oh. she is. Oh, you all set? Ready. Is it that time? No, 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 no. Just, um, finish your wine. I just gotta check homework and I'll be back out. Oh, twist my arm. <laughs> Good night, Audrey. Good night. Have you seen Dad's dog tags? I'll go get him. Don't mind if I do. Okay. Mom? Mm hmm? Dad? He's really dead, right? Yes, yeah, sweetie. I would never joke about that. And we certainly wouldn't have moved away. So, why can I hear him sometimes? Um, well, some people believe that our loved ones can talk to us from heaven. He talks to me. Like, he's in the same room with me. Tells me he loves us. He tells me he's sad we moved away. Oh. And he told me not to talk to the bad man anymore. What? Who? The janitor in the school basement. The one who took our soccer ball. When did you talk to him? In the hallway yesterday. 
doesn't like kids very much. Sister Beatrice says he's harmless, but I think there's something wrong with him. You listen to your father. You stay away from the janitor, in the basement, and Sister Beatrice, for that matter. Okay. Our Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed art the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Ah, uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and the restful night to come. And we pray for... My dad. Your dad. Grandma and Grandpa. Grandma and Grandpa, good. Who else? Yeah, Mr. Stonewall. He's nice. And Sandra, who helped us find this lovely home. Yes, and Sandra. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Good night, Mom. Open or closed? Closed is fine. Mrs. Charles? Mrs. Charles? Yeah? Do you have a minute? Sure. I heard from Mr. Stonewall yesterday about the incident at the basement. Oh, no, there really wasn't an incident. But it's just that we keep the exterior basement door locked during school hours for safety reasons. And we can't allow parents to go exploring unescorted. Well, wait, hold on. I, let me get this straight. I, I wasn't exploring. Uh, the kid's soccer ball went in the basement. And Caleb wasn't coming back up, so I just went down there to find him. But that's impossible, because the door is always locked. Look, Faye, the door was wide open, so I really don't need a lecture. And if you don't want people going in the basement, you should talk to that walking mountain of a janitor and make sure the door's locked when the kids are playing. Are you ready to go? Are we done here? But I'm still not clear on... Like I said, you want answers? Talk to your janitor. Come on, honey. How's school?
What took you so long? Excuse me? How was your drive from San Diego? Um... We've been expecting you, Mrs. Charles. I'm Felix Connolly, pastor of St. Francis. Welcome to our community. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm not used to... I'm not a stickler for formality, Mrs. Charles. Well, in that case, call me Liz. Liz. Is there anything we can do to help you get settled in? Actually, there's one thing. My husband, Jason, he was um, killed in Afghanistan. I'm very sorry. Thanks. Okay. I uh, uprooted my daughter, moved a thousand miles away, feel like I've forsaken my family, and I uh, might be doing emotional harm to my child. Children are very resilient, Liz. I doubt you're doing any permanent damage. I'm also having dreams about him. Jason. They're nightmares, really. It's very common among the bereaved. Is it? sense of something that can never make sense. Does he say anything in the dreams? He tries. I never hear him. It's like I'm, I'm there with him in the war zone. Are you sure it's normal? It's absolutely normal. We can talk about it tomorrow if you like. I have 11 o'clock free. You'll come by the office? Okay, sure. Okay. Oh, uh, I know this wasn't a formal confession, but uh, just to be safe. Ecke absolvo. Amen. Amen.
Mark, get the hell off my property. Secrets must be kept. Help them. May I help you? I need to talk to Mrs. Phillips. Mrs. Charles, did we have an appointment? Cut the shit, Faye. I am not in the mood this morning. I want to know what right you think you have sending school personnel to my home to threaten me. I don't know what you mean. When was this? This morning. And who was there? Sister Beatrice. The nun who harassed my daughter when I went into the basement. Sister Beatrice? Don't pretend you don't know. Look, I understand you not wanting to face liability if some accident occurred when I was down there, but it's your janitor who left the door wide open. That's right. I wanted you to talk to Mr. Dobbs. Gail, would you call Mr. Dobbs, please? Mr. Dobbs, to the principal's office, please. Mrs. Charles, let's discuss this. I don't know what there's to discuss. Door was open, and I certainly don't need a visit from Mother Superior to scare me into good behavior. I've had enough swollen knuckles to last me a lifetime. But Mrs. Charles, Liz, what? you said Sister Beatrice. I don't know. That's what Audrey said her name was. It's the slender nun with the severe face. Probably describes all of them. But here's the thing. St. Francis School does not have any nuns on staff, or priests for that matter. Although we share grounds with the church, the school hasn't employed clergy in over 50 years. Well, you should probably let Sister Beatrice know that. Mr. Dobbs, uh, did you have the exterior basement door open any time Tuesday afternoon? No, it's been locked since school started. I use the interior access. So, at no time? I don't know who this is, but I'm talking about the other janitor. The other janitor? He's huge. He's got greasy hair and coveralls. He was in the basement when I went down there. Mrs. Phillips? That's all, Mr. Dobbs. Thank you. Sorry to take you from your work. All right. Don't tell me. Mr. Dobbs is our only janitor. I went into the basement because one of your students was down there and he wasn't coming back up. I was concerned. Did you even check on him? Was he ever even found? Not to my knowledge. In fact, we don't have a Caleb enrolled here. Caleb Douglas. Audrey said he was new, so he must be under your radar. Mrs. Charles, I know every single one of our students. We don't have a Caleb Douglas enrolled here. This is ridiculous. Nineteen fifty seven. You know that was before my time. Well, according to Mrs. Phillips, St. Francis hasn't employed clergy for years, but Audrey called her sister Beatrice. Mm-hmm. Now how's your daughter do it? Don't start with me, Father. My daughter did not imagine that nun or that janitor or that little boy any more than I did. Liz? When you've suffered grief like you have, it's not unusual to have dreams, visual hallucinations. It's your brain reacting to trauma. That's all. I thought you were supposed to help me with my grief. That's exactly what I'm doing. Well, the dreams are bad enough. I don't want to feel anymore. Well, the dreams are your subconscious way of trying to make you feel. 
When it comes to grief, there's no way out but through. Sooner or later, you have to process. Okay. What if this is the way I process? And what if this nun is a figment of my traumatized imagination? And why would my daughter be hallucinating the exact same thing? You served? Yeah, desert storm. Tanker. You're from back east, huh? New Rochelle, born and raised. Signed here in 97. Why here? It's where they send the troublemakers. <laughs> I don't know, luck of the draw, I guess. It's a good community. Can you do something for me, Father? Sure. Could you look through the school records? It, just to see if, if Beatrice is employed anywhere in the parish. And same with the little boy, Caleb. Find out if he was or is a student. I just want to verify that these people exist so we can rule out that my daughter and I are insane. Liz. I'm pretty sure you're not insane. I'll be happy to do some digging around on your behalf, yeah. Thank you, Mother. And we know I get to meet your daughter. Well, if you're not above a house call, why don't you have dinner with us tomorrow? It sounds lovely. How about five? That works. All right. Maybe I'll have some more information based on what I can dig up. Take a business card. My cell phone's on there in case you need it. Cell phone? Ooh, an email. <laughs> well, priests are a lot more tech savvy than when I was little. Oh. We're getting there. <laughs> All right, tomorrow at five. Yeah. Do I get a hug or what? I just had a, a nightmare, that's all. About Dad? Yeah. Yeah, about Dad. He 
he's still watching over us. I can feel it. <sighs> so can I, honey. So can I. <laughs> She's an extremely bright and precocious young lady, Mrs. Charles. A uh, great artist. And in fact, our vocab test this first week had the highest score in the class. All correct, plus the extra credit. It's good to know. But you see, she's not very sociable with the other children. Well, I admit it's great. She doesn't disrupt class with a lot of talking. It's, well, it's just a red flag for me as a teacher. She's always been an introvert, Mr. Stonewall. Well, and that's absolutely fine, Mrs. Charles. I get it, being 12, being a military kid, and and going through the loss that your family has gone through. I just hope we can facilitate some help for her, her fragile emotional state. Your mom lets you read comic books? Sure, why? I have to sneak them. That's too bad. Which is your favorite? I like a lot of alternative stuff in manga mostly. Torchlight Lullaby, Glass Wings, Bleach. I don't know those. Mine's Batman. Well, it's not Batman, but you can read mine if you want. No, that's okay. The sister doesn't like him. I'll get punished. She can't punish you. It's after school and Reading comments isn't sinful. She's gonna punish me. Don't be scared, Caleb. Help me. I'm not gonna pretend that we haven't been through a kind of personal hell. The move was rough, on top of everything else. It's probably gonna take Audrey a little more than a week to get settled in. Oh, for sure. I hope the, the drawing therapy helps with her processing. Yeah, the drawings, they're a real dinner time conversation starter, let me tell ya. And it's not like she hasn't made any friends. She's gotten pretty close to that kid, Caleb. I'm not familiar with the Caleb. Come on. She's talking to him on the bench right now. Sorry, there doesn't seem to be anyone with her. Well, he probably just left. And on that note... Uh, do keep in touch, Mrs. Charles, if there's anything I can do, or if you want to talk over coffee sometime. Oh, thank you, Mr. Stonewall, but my dance card is pretty full. Oh, I, I, I wasn't... I gotta go. Dinner won't cook itself. Looks like you're getting settled in. Yeah. This must be Audrey. Hi. Hi. I'm Father Felix. It's nice to meet you. Are you here to tell them to go away? Tell who go away, dear? The angry people. Audrey, gather up your art stuff and get changed for dinner. These the angry people? They don't want us here. Well, we'll just have to see about that, won't we? I'll help you with the wine. Her, huh? 
What was that like? If you don't mind talking about it. We rode into a rock. We were like medieval knights on horseback. Endless line of armor, far as the eye could see. Hell bound for Babylon. Well fires made the sky pitch black all day. Exploding vehicles lit it up like cheap fireworks. I guess we'd been there maybe a week. Something came out of the desert and started stalking us. Every night. Pacing back and forth in front of the sentries like some kind of beast. IR, night vision, nothing picked it up. No tracks. But we could feel it. Moving in the shadows. Making a noise. Like garbled voices on a radio. What was it? It wasn't us. It wasn't them. It wasn't human. It was as close to pure evil as I've ever come. Followed me home. Holy shit. So I learned how to defend myself. You're going to need more wine. What did you find out? There was, in fact, a sister Beatrice employed at St. Francis School from 1945 to 1958. So why is she still hanging out at the school? Maybe she's looking for directions to a graveyard. She died in 1963. She died? At a psychiatric hospital in Manhattan. How is that possible? If this is who you see him, I think you're picking up on some very old baggage. Two young boys disappeared near the school in 1957. Students. The janitor was implicated in their disappearance. The school was closed for two years. Sister Beatrice was transferred to a diocese clear across the country. No bodies were ever found. Was the janitor a big guy? That's one word for it. Andrew Hurst. 67350. Had some kind of behavioral disorder, but uh, I can't find his medical records to see what it was. This. This is the guy that I saw in the basement. Are you sure? There's no mistaking that face. No charges were ever brought, but Andrew was transferred and committed to Agnew State Hospital, where he died in 1970. He's this year nun. Yeah. Is this your daughter's playmate? Caleb Douglas. Caleb Edgerton. Douglas Edgerton. Twins. These were taken a year before they disappeared. Congratulations, Liz. Within 48 hours of moving to a new town, you managed to dredge up a mystery from 60 years ago. How does one gal get so lucky? 
Hey, don't worry. You won't face it alone. Yeah. I'm BFFs with a spiritual kung fu master. Well, I was going to say, if God before us, who could be against us? But uh, I like the kung fu. <laughs> it's late. I've taken up enough of your evening. I should go. You can keep those. It was nice, if not a bit traumatic. What's next? Well, why don't you poke around online and see if what I left you leads anywhere. Got some contacts back east looking into the records for me. We'll see if they come up with anything. Okay. Thank you, Father. You don't thank me yet. Oh, uh, dinner was lovely. Sweetie? Dad says they don't like us. Well, who doesn't like us? Dad says Father Felix is poking at a hornet's nest. We could have just left, but now we have to finish what we started. Father Felix drank a lot last night. Uh, we had a lot to talk about. About Sister Beatrice? Uh, among other things. Like what? It's complicated. Audrey. Are we going to service tomorrow? Sure. Cool. I'm gonna go draw. Honey, you can draw down here. Nah, I'll be back down in a little bit. Okay. You okay? Just thinking. About what? 
I like Father Felix. Yeah? He's nice. Yeah. He reminds me of Grandpa. <laughs> oh, he's a bit younger than Grandpa. I miss Grandma and Grandpa. So do I. I miss Dad. So do I, honey. I want to go home. Audrey, stop it. This is your home. No, it's not. But Dad says we can't go until we finish. Finish what? I don't know, but I want to go home. I hate it here. I hate it. That is enough, young lady. You do not get to speak to your mother like that. I hate this house. I want to go home. I'm sorry. Maybe it wasn't fair of me to move us up here. Do we have to stay? Honey, I'm doing the best I can, okay? Fine. Get ready for bed, please. Is Audrey okay? God, she's sleeping, but Beatrice was here, and she, she held me down, and I couldn't, I couldn't scream, and I couldn't move. I, I think I'm going crazy. It's all right. I believe you. I saw her at the church. Okay, look. <laughs> Beatrice's father was a very important man. Big church donor. 
He couldn't have been more proud when his daughter became a nun. That's when the rumors started. The rumors about Sarah and Papa. Sarah? Beatrice is named before she took her vows. Sarah Hurst. Mother of Andrew Hurst. By her own father. That explains why Beatrice was so adamant about defending Andrew after the Edgerton twins disappeared. Andrew couldn't defend himself. Why not? Somebody cut out his tongue. Beatrice and Andrew both institutionalized. She steals a tile knife from a hospital janitor, carves a sermon's worth of Bible verses into her flesh, kills an orderly. Two days later, she's dead of a systemic infection. God, she looks possessed. They're all in some kind of limbo, Liz. Andrew was never baptized. No last rites when he died. By church rites, he's a lost soul. Edgerton twins probably murdered, probably buried in unhallowed ground. And Sarah. I think she's become a conduit for something darker. Something much darker. Hang on a second. Audrey, honey? Audrey, you okay? Trust me. Someone's been telling our secrets. Father! Helicos. Crook, sacra, mihi lux, non drago, mihi lux. Gariamus igator. Drago sit miliutux! Audrey! Be strong in the Lord! In the strength of his might, put on the full armor of God, that you may stand strong against the schemes of the evil one! Drago Nones! Raga! Hold your tongue! Lest the agent of God will come for you! For our struggle! It's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. I know. You didn't mean to kill Caleb. Or Douglas, it was your mother. She made you keep that secret. She cut out your tongue, didn't she? Stand firm, therefore. Yourself the truth. You could just let her go. Put on the breastplate of righteousness and lift it high above all. Let her go. The shield of faith on which you may extinguish Pull. all the flaming arrows. Turn up! Silence!
Father! Father! Are they gone? A 60-year-old murder? Unbelievable. Thank you for calling it in. Father, I still need to take your full statement. I'll be right with you, officer. Of course. <laughs> Two skeletons. Male, preteen, in the crawl space behind the altar. Road trip? Yeah. Yeah. So, looks like the couple is still interested. So, win win. <laughs> Good. Thank you for everything. I don't want to get emotional. My makeup is. <laughs> I'll make sure the movers do a great job, okay? Okay. Keep in touch. And you guys call me the moment you get to San Diego. Looks like you have a visitor. Afternoon, Father. Father. So? Rumors are true. Yeah. We're heading back. You sure? Yeah. It's good. A wise man once told me, there's no way out but through. I'd rather live with the ghosts I know. Liz, uh, this served me well. I'd like you to have it, okay? Are you sure? Never can tell. Say goodbye to Father Felix. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. You ready to go, honey? Can I drive? <laughs> You're pushing it, kid. <laughs> 